everyone and welcome back to another root inspiration video where I will be discussing um, a route I did recently from Honister to Great Gable. One of the reasons this is quite an enjoyable route is that it allows you to start quite high up. Um, starting at Honister really prevents quite a long slog um, up towards Great Gable as perhaps maybe some of the other ways will include. Um, there are there is parking at um, the YHA Honister Slate Mine and there is um, a activity outdoor centre which also has a little um, coffee shop as well and the 77 and the 77A bus does pass through there. The weather conditions we had were good. Um, there was a slight breeze, but generally the, the visibility was very clear. Um, it was a lot better than when I had experienced earlier in the summer where it was just sort of a complete cloud whiteout. Um, so this was um, much more encouraging as Great Gable is um, 899 metres above sea level. So it is often in cloud a lot of the time if the weather isn't great. So we started off by getting the bus from Grange um, to Honester Slate Mine. I do notice that the buses are getting busier um, but we fortunately got the last two sitting seats um, and we're able to get there in a, sort of between like half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. So the first part of the ascent up to Grey Knot is via a footpath at the back of the YHA Slate Mine car park. This is also a starting point um, for uh, a more accessible route up towards Fleetwood Pike so there will be a couple of people around however there is a clear sign that says to Grey Knots um, which is what you should be following to start this hike. It does start pretty steep and intensely for the first maybe half an hour it is maybe sort of a um, hands and feet situation um, and there is a slight scramble there is also some water coming down which does make it slightly harder and particularly if there has been a lot of rain or it is raining that obviously makes it slippier I probably wouldn't recommend coming down this way um, just because how much of it is not vertical but it is definitely um, a more of a scramble. You get some really nice views as you start to ascend this very steep section over Borrowdale, Dale Head, Fleetwith Pike um, and you can lose people quite quickly because as I said it is steep. So at the top of um, Grey Knots you get to see your first glimpse of Great Gable in all its glory if the weather is permitting which is quite exciting really because you sort of feel like okay this is where we're going. We're now on the top of Grey Knots and as you can see in the background there is Great Gable and Green Gable so we'll be heading up over there. Um, it's really nice to see Great Gable not in cloud. I feel like the last time I was here it was a complete whiteout so it's actually quite exciting to see Great Gable looming over the rest of the valley. Um, and the walk between Grey Knots and Brandeth is fairly flat actually. Um, it was a little bit boggy um, which is definitely the theme of this of my walks during this time because it had rained a lot um, but it, it quite um, undistinguishable and when you sort of reach the top of Brandeth you're sort of like is this the top is this the top but then it, it is fairly level um, between the two. It does then get slightly difficult if there isn't much visibility as I have previously found and there are quite a lot of cairns and stakes to show you the correct way to go down um, toward, before you start ascending Green Gable because there's a sort of descent before an ascent. As you um, start to walk along um, this sort of path down and then up towards um, Green Gable, you see some really special views of over Ennerdale, Pillar, um, and something that I think is really enjoyable about this walk is the views of Pillar and Ennerdale, and you can sort of see down to the Black Sail YHA, um, and I really just took the time to sort of soak it up because it is a really special part of the Lake District, I think. So at the top of Green Gable, you then come to the infamous Windy Gap, um, which is a sort of steep descent and then sudden ascent uh, in a V shape, um, which is 
uh, allows you to get to the start of climbing the final ascent towards Great Gable. This also takes you down um, to Seathwaite Fell, I believe, um, and that sort of general area, and it is a route that people will pass over. Um, fortunately, it wasn't that windy on the day that we did it, so the gap wasn't that windy, um, but it is sort of fairly steep on both sides, so general precaution is advised on this section. The ascent up to Great Gable is a nice grade one scramble. Um, similar to the beginning, really, there is hands and feet involved um, and you just sort of kind of make your own way up. There are some sections that might be easier to others, depending on how tall or swift you are at um, grabbing for different sort of rock faces, um, but very manageable and, and um, especially if rock, sort of rock climbing or scrambling isn't really your thing it's definitely very achievable um for a, a more broad range of ability so once you have got to the summit of great gable there are some really spectacular views um over um scarfell scarfell pike gray end um also down the other uh, direction towards haystacks and um, pillar um kirkfell it is really something to behold um and i really enjoyed my time up there it is a fairly busy summit although the plateau is massive so um if you don't necessarily want to be on the summit cairn then there is space to just sort of soak it all up and take it all in there are multiple exits off the top um of the summit and this was where i think it's definitely worth taking a compass bearing um at, just to double check because there are paths that lead off that lead towards more sort of steep terrain um we ended up heading off one particular route in a um, northwesterly direction and it, it ended up it sort of appeared that it on when i was tracking on the os app that it, it wasn't really on a path but it but it was um led down by cairns so I think it's one of those just making sure that you're um you know you've taken your bearing and you're heading off in the right direction um because it then does get quite steep and um in order to sort of prevent having to climb back up to then reassess where you should be going definitely take the time at that point to prevent any unnecessary um detours or um re sort of going back on yourself basically the descent option that we took was quite steep and i did end up sort of sitting down and shuffling and sitting down and shuffling um it's definitely not my strong suit um coming down very sort of steep terrain but um we got towards the end uh, and heading towards um beck head um and sort of swinging back round towards moses trod which again had sort of great views um looking back over towards um the haystacks um and Ennerdale and was really sort of trying to take soak it all in before you sort of take Moses Trod um all the way back really takes you all the way back towards Honister um fairly flat with maybe a slight um ascent and sort of descent but when you get back towards um in between Fleetwith Pike and grey knots there's an there's an option to take the slate main cart where they would take the, the sort of slate down and they've converted that old line into a, a path which is very sort of straightforward and takes you right the way down moses trod has some interesting law um myth or maybe it is true i'm i'm not entirely sure but uh, of moses rig who was a uh smuggler of some sorts taking his uh whiskey between um the sort of honister and um also down towards um Westwater and sort of the other side of, of, of great gable but um i think it was also used for maneuvering slate round as well so it's um quite a good path to um stretch out your legs on so the route was 11 kilometers in total and we did it in about five hours and 41 minutes with some breaks and lunch included um i really enjoyed it and my partner also um really felt like it had a broad range of different um terrain and also uh, views so it was very worthwhile doing and i would highly recommend 
so i hope you've enjoyed watching this video and i look forward to seeing you in the next one bye